Hello everyone, this is Nick, and I wanted to give you an overview of my final project for the end of the semester, and I've decided to do it on design justice and unequal distribution of benefits and burdens. So you might be asking why I decided to focus on design for this project, and it happens to lie in my education background. So within the MI program, I'm an interaction design concentration major, um, and this slide here kind of helps to clarify the field of interaction design. So believe it or not, interaction design is a subset of a larger field called user experience design. Um, there is something called user experience design and user interface design. So the interface side of it takes a look at color, typography, visual design. Um, you might think of graphic designer, where user experience takes a look at how we as users interact with a piece of technology. So for the brainstorming process, I naturally went to Google and I looked up a bunch of different theories within human computer interaction and I found topics such as artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, smart home products, um, social media, a variety of different things. And from our course learnings, design justice is a field of theory and practice that is concerned with how the design of objects and systems influences the distribution of risks risks, harms, and benefits among various groups of people. I also thought about maybe looking at design from a social media perspective, which is based off of the hate speech um, module that we, that we did. And I thought maybe there was a way that design could help prevent that or limit hate speech online. And then the third approach I possibly thought about is something called participatory and community design, which takes a look at how designers can design for specific groups of people like in, at the institutional level, or city or state level. And participatory design encourages us to include the user within the design process. So for the book review process, I had the opportunity to read a book called The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman, who is very widely known in the HCI field. And his book really opened up my eyes to different theories within the field. For example, um, his main argument centers around the fact that people should not express guilt or frustration over failed interactions with products because unintuitive interfaces are actually at fault. He introduces a topic called the conceptual model, which is a theoretical framework that a person develops in their mind when they interact with the system. Basically, that's like a blueprint. On the other hand, the designer also creates a blueprint of how they think that we will interact with the product. So ultimately, our conceptual model as a user should match what the designer has in mind when they conflict with each other, um, that's when usability problems tend to arise. All designers must ensure that a human-centered design approach is carefully followed in order to dismiss any differences between the user's anticipated abilities of a system and the system's actual abilities. In his book, um, Don Norman also identifies a couple other topics like affordances and signifiers. Now, you guys have obviously used a door before, and you've seen on certain doors you have to push versus pull and it's always a disaster every single time. Um, so affordances help describe what actions are actually possible. He also describes learned helplessness versus taught helplessness, which occurs after falling, failing multiple times and giving up by displaying helplessness. Um, taught helplessness is happens over time. It's when you fail at a new task because there's some reliance on a previous task. Like in math, if you can't do addition and subtraction or multiplication, you certainly can't do algebra. <laughs> Um, he also talks about knowledge in the head and knowledge in the world, which takes a look at how we as users have memory that occurs in multiple different places. And he uses constraints, discoverability, and feedback to help limit what possibilities exist when interacting with a product. So for research methodology, there was two different course modules that really helped my understanding. So week five, we took a look at race and gender in the social and in infrastructural fabric of information and technology. And then in week 13, we're going to look at information and technology design. I also used a couple different academic databases. So when I was reading the course materials, at the end of the materials, it gives a list of different um, references. And I use that list of references to help find different articles within the HCI field that lined up with my topic. So after searching Google Scholar and Rutgers University libraries, um, I found a variety of different articles. Within the Rutgers University Library um, interface, it's kind of ironic, um, I was able to use the advanced search feature. And basically what I did is I, I typed in um, UX design and 
I typed in design justice. And in addition to that, you can put in other keywords. So I also put in UX design, I put in interaction design, I put in UI design, I put in HDI. On the first slide, I, I explained how many different terms there are in this field, which kind of makes research a little bit more complicated because it could be a subset of anything. So by using the advanced search features within the library database, I was able to find articles that better suited what I was looking for. And then some informal sources that I used. Um, on LinkedIn, I am part of a user experience design group, and there's a bunch of um, people that write in there from the field, like Don Norman. Um, and I also subscribe to the Nielsen Norman Group weekly newsletters, and they kind of give you tips of different design practices and kind of update you what's going on within the field. Um, going further, I'm going to continue to monitor some social media accounts and look up some hashtags related to design justice. So for the research corpus, um, design justice is a field of theory and practice that is concerned with how the design of objects and systems influences the distribution of risks, harms, and benefits among various groups of people. Design justice focuses on the way that design produces, is reproduced by, and or challenges the matrix of domination like white supremacy and capitalism. This comes from the Cassandra Chalk article, so we should be a little bit familiar with that because we read it back in week five. Um, it's also a growing social movement that aims to ensure that people are better equipped to interact with technology, and it seeks to prevent better distribution of technology. Ultimately, when all perspectives are taken into account during the design process, usability and satisfaction are increased. This kind of goes back to the user-centered design principles that I learned from reading the Design of Everyday Things book. Um, I also looked up some other articles, and I uncovered some other perspectives, such as design is a choice. It's an argumentative process, process with no optimal solutions. There will always be compromises within design, and it's unavoidable because there are no best solutions to support everyone's specific goals, objectives, and values. Um, we also get introduced to a theory called the quality of life, which technology's ultimate goal is to improve the quality of life of all humans, the ultimate promise. It is necessary to analyze what the needs of humans are and how technology can help meet them. If information and computing technologies are developed to improve the quality of life of all humans, then it is necessary to analyze what those needs are and how technology is required to meet them. As designers, we need to explore socio-technical environments that contribute to human creativity, gratification, and enjoyment in order to understand how quality of life can be improved. Um, lastly, which is really interesting, I took a look at social justice to uncover additional um, theories within design justice. So human-computer interaction designers have begun pursuing research agendas that address large-scale social issues. These systematic problems present challenges for design practice due to their scope, scale, and complexity of, and political nature. So for the final research summary, I'm going to introduce my topic. I'm going to use the design of everyday things as kind of a theoretical background to all of the concepts that I'm going to introduce from my um, from my articles. So a pre preliminary thesis that I developed, design justice seeks to understand how the design of technological components can unequally distribute both advantages and disadvantages. Interaction design teams should champion diversity in order to fairly weigh design choices, improve overall quality of life, and battle social justice-oriented causes. A couple body paragraphs that I've outlined on this slide include design justice, um, using choices within design, understanding quality of life, and social justice-oriented design. So ultimately, it's from my background in interaction design that I decided to, to take my final project in this direction. And from the reading that I read from Don Norman's The Everyday, The Design of Everyday Things, um, it really connected with me, and I wanted to take it further and understand how the user-centered design concept um, can play out in different contexts. And we, as designers, must ensure that we follow a user-centered design approach so that we, we can design systems that take into account the needs of all of our users. And this is exhibited in the various articles that I will present in my final paper. So that's all I have for you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about my project. If any of you guys have any feedback, feel free to comment. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your semester.